Hi, everybody. Well, sometimes with family, especially with siblings, you kind of got to be sneaky to get your way. So right now, my sister is staying with her son, Mark, my nephew, uh, at his place. And they are getting, Mark is getting ready for a trip to Cuba. They booked a uh, resort in Cuba with some friends that were going. They got talked into going, so they're going to Cuba uh, on a land vacation. And I was talking to Mark and getting him ready because I booked the trip for him and everything. And he says... Um, that my sister wasn't feeling well. Now, normally every night at five o'clock roughly, her and I get on a game called World of Warcraft and we play that and that's our way of keeping, you know, commu communication. When she lived out of town and everything, we would get on there and even if there's nothing to talk about, we're still chatting, we're still talking about the game, we're talking about things we're doing, we're still connecting, right? It's a fun thing to do, it keeps you connected with your sister. And uh, she wasn't going to play that night. She was dead sick. And I said, oh, okay. And then another day went by and my nephew goes, yeah, she hasn't, she hasn't left the room. Like she's that sick kind of thing. And I go, oh. So I call her up to see how she's doing. And uh, like she can barely talk on the phone. She can barely move. Uh, you can hear it like she's wheezing and coughing and I said well have you gone to see a doctor yet and she goes what doctor I don't have a family doctor here I said well there's a walking clinic there's an emergency if you're feeling that bad there's alternatives oh no you know it just takes forever to do that she says she, so right away I know that to get her to see a doctor is not the easiest thing in the world my sister is older than I am, and she's, how, what's the word that you would use? I think stubborn. <laughs> but I'll just use the word stubborn. Let's, let's go with that, because so she won't hit me when she, she, she's better. <laughs> but um, yeah, so because my nephew was leaving, uh, and left around 4 a.m. to head to the airport and everything. I, I called her up around 8 a.m. because I know she's an early riser and I could still hear she's sick and everything. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to come and pick you up and you're going to come stay with me. So, you know, I don't like you being alone while you're sick and I'll make you soup and stuff like that. So I go over to the house and I say, and literally it took me like two and a half hours just to get her dressed and downstairs to get to the car. Like she, every, every, she'd get up, she'd walk like five steps and have to sit down and breath and had a hard time breathing, like sit down and rest. We go up the stairs and she gets onto the bed, she just collapses on her back on the bed like this, like she can't and having a hard time breathing. So I know I have to do something about this. And so by the time I get her in the car, I say, I said, you know what? Maybe we should just go for a little, a quick little detour. I know it's not going to be a quick detour. Let's go for a little quick detour and maybe, you know, stop in and see if we can get you a shot or some intravenous or something at, at the emergency. She says, what, we're going to go to the hospital? It'll take forever. I said, oh, it won't take that long. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be that bad, right? And this way you get some medication, you'll be feeling better right away. And, it, and she's arguing with me a bit but I'm heading to the hospital. <laughs> I have her in the car. She can't do anything about it. I already have her in my car and this was my plan all along. And we get to the Ottawa General Hospital and I bring her up to the emergency and I run down and park, get back up and we're waiting. Now that part was quick. Boom. She, she's there. Then they call her in to the triage area where you go in and the nurse takes your temperature and your, your, your blood pressure, etc., And they immediately hooked up an IV, got her some uh, fluids going into her. And then they also took some blood and that's just in the triage area. Then we go back out and we have to wait. And then they call us for the wristband that you get, you know, the bracelet for the hospital. 
And we go for that, and then the waiting began. Place was packed, place was full. We were there about five and a half hours before they called us in to see a doctor. But that wasn't to see the doctor. That was in to go into the room to wait to see the doctor. Uh, and there's, they called in like five people in that area because they call them in in bunches. And so we were put in a room. It was, it was a pretty good room and everything, a good size, lots of space. And she finally was, she had herself a cot that she was able to kind of lie back on and get more comfortable after like six hours of sitting up in a wheelchair all that time. So we did get her in and lo and behold, she has pneumonia and she, they were very worried about her because her heart was really having to work to keep her you know, breath going and everything when she's wheezing and coughing. So they ended up taking a ton of blood, urine samples, x-rays, chest x-rays, a whole bunch of other things. And I'm going to myself, I'm saying, they're not sending her home tonight. There's no way they're sending her home tonight. But I didn't mention anything, but I kind of hinted at it. You know, it's like, you know, you, you know, if, if I started going things like, so tomorrow, if you have to be here overnight and everything, and you have to be put in a room, do you want a TV or would you like me to just bring you your laptop? And she's, oh, I, I'd like the TV. I said, okay, okay. And I said, wait, what, do you think I'm going to be here tomorrow? I go, no, well, maybe. It's a possibility. You should just get yourself ready. In my head, I'm also thinking if they admit her, it's not for one day. It's going to be for more days uh, because they, they'll wait till the infection's completely gone. They're not just going to send her on her way. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened with the doctor. Um, around midnight, we got put into another room. Um, still not a bed. It was still a, uh, you know, a dolly, but uh, it was more of a private room in observation area where there's nurses that look directly after them. There's no, and keep the treatments going, keep the fluids in them and everything. Plus my, my sister's diabetic, so they have to keep an eye on her blood sugar and things like that. So there's a lot involved, but now like even from the moment I saw her in the morning after she started getting some fluids and everything into her. She was much more coherent and much more alive and able to do things. Like I saw night and day between the morning and midnight. You know, she's tired, she's out of breath and everything, but she's coherent kind of thing compared to what I saw in the morning. So sometimes, sometimes you gotta be tricky with your family especially your stubborn family and you got to kind of know what you're doing to get them to do what you want them to do and I've kind of mastered that with my sister somewhat over certain things uh, and I guess probably vice versa. She's probably done the same to me and I don't even know it.